Hi, I'm Mike Mazzalongo and you're watching the Bible Talk video blog. Today's blog entry is entitled Duck Dilemma. Well, the duck people have gone and done it now. The patriarch of reality television's duck dynasty has actually shared his Christian perspective on the subject of homosexuality with a reporter for Trendy GQ magazine. Of course, the reaction to his unfiltered view of homosexuality as a sin and the comment that he didn't get why gays preferred men to women was, to say the least, a cardinal offense to that group and those who saw this as an attack on their lifestyle and human rights. Cue the media, who never pass up a chance to blow up any conflict between gays and religious groups, and you have a non-story becoming a major headline overnight. You know, this episode presents us with several lessons that all Christians who, for whatever reason, find themselves in the limelight for their 15 minutes of fame. Lesson number one, the world will never accept you. Now, they may applaud your talent or laugh at your jokes for a while, but in the end, they will reject you because sooner or later, you will have to choose to conform to what the world wants you to be or what Christ wants you to be. You can finesse the hard truths of Christ for a time to maintain your position with non-believers, but eventually your belief and their belief uh, will not be able to coexist. Uh, we know this from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 to 16. Lesson number two, the gospel is God's power to convert souls, not reality TV. You know, over 14 million people watch Duck Dynasty each week, and the entire family are household names, but the net result of this success is money, lots of money, not new disciples of Christ. A&E has made a huge profit off the show, and the Robertson family has become rich. Of course, there's nothing wrong with Christian people being rich. Many faithful people in the Bible were rich. For example, Abraham, he was rich. Lydia, the seller of purple in the New Testament, she was rich. But it was not their wealth or fame that influenced others to believe. Now the Robertson family has done a good job of exposing many viewers to Christian habits and virtues and should be commended for that. But people watch them for their idiosyncrasies, not their faith. Conversion requires the actual word of God to be preached and patiently explained. Number three, free speech is every American's right, except if you're a Christian. You know, Hollywood can produce the vilest of content without comment. Gay rights activists can march nearly naked in parade and are applauded. Atheists can put up giant billboards in Times Square insulting religious believers and there's no outcry but Christians are mocked and vilified if they simply express what the Bible plainly says about men having sex with other men. It's not a surprise that A&E suspended Phil Robertson for his comments. Their parent company is Disney, the most pro-gay corporation in America. Notice that aside from church members, a few AM talk radio hosts and people on Twitter no one of political or social importance has defended this Christian man's right to express his own personal opinion, and this given because of a direct question posed by a reporter. So the party's over, duck people. The world has discovered to their dismay that aside from the goofy beards and the down-home quirks, you really do believe, and they'll have none of that. You see, your faith highlights their lack of faith, and the consequence of that disbelief is spiritual death. No amount of backwoods charm can hide that central truth. You had a good run. Thanks for giving us the chance of seeing one of our own on a hit TV show. You were a light in a dark place for a little while, but you know how it is. They don't come to the light because they love the darkness more. Well, I'm Mike Mazzalongo and you've been watching the Bible Talk video blog. Hope you come back and check us out again soon. Bye-bye.